Hello. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to New Book Tuesday on CPL Radio. This is a show that covers, as the title indicates, uh, new books. New books that come to our library, the Cedarburg Public Library in Cedarburg, Wisconsin. If you're tuning here in town, thanks. If you're tuning from outside of town, thanks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jeff Messerman. I'm the uh, Adult Services Librarian. You can find me upstairs, and here's other people to introduce themselves. I'm Casey St. Clair, Head of Youth Services. And I'm Gemma Lavender. I'm the Adult Services Library Associate. They are so good at introductions. I love that. So anyway, um, here's a good, interesting question. What's going on at your library? Well, you may or may not have noticed, for those of you in Wisconsin, there's no more snow. Summer reading is going on. So Casey, why don't you tell people uh, what your kitties and you can do for summer reading? Awesome. So every year we do summer reading program. It has begun, began June 1st, but it's not too late to sign up. There's a program for everyone, kids ranging from zero to 17 and an adult program as well. There's lots of prizes along the way, coupons to local area businesses. And the best part is that kids get to choose how much they want to read this year. So there's no minimum hours or number of books. They set their own reading goal that's doable for them and are encouraged to listen to audiobooks, read graphic novels, really take advantage of being done with school for the year and read what they want to read instead of boring English books. <laughs> now, Assigned, boring English books. Assigned boring English books. What do you mean by we have, we have an English person here? We don't want to say boring English books. Literature, <laughs> yes. literature, yes, yes, not yes. the geographical <laughs> location. We don't want any of those boring Englishmen. <laughs> uh, so well, there's enough of them. I don't even know if they call English class English class anymore. I don't it's think probably they do. like literature arts. Com arts. They call it com arts nowadays. Yeah. 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 Um, what else? yeah. Language arts. Yeah, I've heard yeah, that too. Yeah. Yes, yeah. absolutely. It's yeah, it's yeah, a va- big, it's a vague description. It I is. worked at the school district for a couple months and all of the acronyms were so confusing <laughs> of all the different terms that they call. So. Yes, yes. <laughs> in my da- in my days it was science, English, math, yeah. read and write and arithmetic. arithmetic. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and recess. <laughs> there we go. I don't know if they call it recess anymore. They got like, you know, planned organized break or something. I mean, yeah, it's just everything has to have an acronym. But, um, well, there we are. Uh, Summer reading is underway. As uh, Casey said, zero to 100. Although I don't think we get a lot of age zeros here. uh, But I hope we get, uh, you know, a three-day-old or a one-week-old. We'll take them. Yeah. (laughs) For her. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. So, well, let's talk about some new books that we got delivered recently or semi-recently. You can find them on our new arrivals area. Uh, by and large. And I'm going to go first. I haven't gone first in a long time, and uh, that just isn't fair. So <laughs> Instead of pitching a fit, I, I just went first. Uh, this week, uh, usually I dabble in fiction, but I grabbed, uh, as I have on this show before, I grabbed a uh, memoir, a, a biography, autobiography this, uh, this time around, by a man named Edward Zwick, or on the cover, he calls himself Ed Zwick, and uh, the book is called Hits, Flops and other illusions, and I thought, "Wow, my life story has finally been <laughs> put to uh, put to paper." But no, um, Edward Zwick is a Hollywood bigwig. I like, um, and like I said, I've read a few recent um, Hollywood memoirs of the creatives out there on the West Coast, and I find them strangely fascinating, only because I thought in my twenties this would be my life. Jeff, can I <laughs> can I ask a question? Oh, I'm so ready. Have you been to Hollywood once? How was it? 1996. So here's the deal. I was <laughs> I was there briefly trying to uh, foster a screenwriting career. Mm-hmm. Um, and I had a meeting planned and scheduled. Very few people know I did this. This was one of these things I did in 1995, 95, 96. Okay. And I went out there for about a little under a week. Mm-hmm. And I had my meeting and the meeting went okay, mm-hmm. but I was so depressed and demoralized by Los Angeles in general that I just came mm-hmm. barreling back home. But um, my parents didn't even know I did this. This was something my Ooh. friends, Do nobody... Do they know now? If, they're, if mom's tuning in, she will. <laughs> like 
I never talk about it. And I, I just thought this, this is the perfect time to talk about it. Casey well, asked, I was like, yes. okay, I'm doing it. I'm, do- <laughs> I'm, I'm bringing it to the airwaves. So, um, so you've seen the sign. You've been down the, the sign, yes. Beverly Hills. By the way, the sign's a dump. Just yeah, so you know, it it's is. all a dump. Um, and it's gotten only gotten huh, worse, I'm sure. Um, at that time in '96, it really felt like the end of the world. I just, I, and I, I didn't like it. I didn't like anything about it. I thought if I, if I'm, if I'm successful in my meeting, I'll have to work here and live here. I don't ever want to do that. And so I came barreling it's, back to Wisconsin. It's not a nice place, but you no. know what? I may have been in Los Angeles in 1996, too. Why didn't you offer me your sofa <laughs> or something? My God, the hotel I was at was a nightmare. Oh, well, I, was, I was in a hostel. <laughs> oh. Um. A hostel hostel or just a hostile hostel? <laughs> Been, actually. <laughs> See, we're in the Beverly Hills Hotel. No, and no. It was not one of my glam periods. It was my more <sighs> traveling backpack days. Oh my gosh. Cool. The one person who knew I was out there, they called and said, uh, or I called them, and, says, and I, you know, and I said, this is hell. This mm. actually is hell. You the know. Driving sucks. Oh. I did not like it as a city. <sighs> it's all. laid out for, it's I don't know. It's way too sprawling. Yeah. It's very ugly. The only bit I liked was up by the observatory because it was yeah. sort of like it's very pastoral. Mm-hmm. Jimmy yeah. Dean. Kind right. of <laughs> Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but do you know what is a lovely and picturesque area? Yes. Cedarburg. Well, yeah. you know, yeah. that's yeah. just yeah. it. Yes. Why you we're know, here. we're all here. Absolutely. Well, Mr. Zwick, <laughs> <laughs> dialing back, um, um, made a, made quite the go of it. Although it's funny, uh, chapter two is about his first month in Los Angeles, too. I'm actually so thrilled you asked that question because I wasn't sure what passage to read out of this this week. So I think I'm going to read you. Um, and I should give a little background here. So Edward Zwick is a writer director. Uh, you listeners, and I'm sure some everyone in this room has seen something he's done. He's one of these directors that's kind of a journeyman who has done so much. And um, but I'll give you a few of his film credits yeah. here and television. 1994 was my so-called life with Claire Danes. Everyone was into that in the 90s. Um, he did 30 something. The, the show is 30 something. Um, film wise, uh, one of my favorites of his is he directed a film called Courage Under Fire with uh, Meg Ryan, which is actually and um, Denzel Washington. Dangerous Beauty with uh, Michelle Pfeiffer. Uh, Shakespeare in Love is his. Oh, uh, <laughs> everyone knows that. We, one. we all went. Uh, oh. well, we on this side of the table. We <laughs> Absolutely. Went, uh, <laughs> um, what else? Uh, I Am Sam. He did that film with uh, Sean oh, Penn, which Lord. is a lovely little movie. Glory with Matthew Broderick back in 89. It's mm-hmm. a really good Civil War uh, film. Denzel Washington again. Um, the original About Last Night with Rob Lowe, 1986. Um, so Legends of the Fall, Brad Pitt, okay, um, 1994. Right. So, yeah, he's... He has- He's got cred. He's, He's got, got street cred. cred. I thought it out. Yeah, <laughs> no, he's definitely. Um, but so, what's he writing about? Uh, it's his life and his time in Hollywood, and he names name drops. He's not afraid to. He's older. I mean, he's been around a while. <laughs> he's so allowed, believe, isn't he? he uh, he's like, earned he, the right. You know, yeah. if he's friends with Denzel. Then I don't know if he will be anymore. <laughs> no, he's not. Too, I'm reading it just for that. He's he's uh, generous with uh, Denzel, but um, not very generous. He, uh, that's, I would say most of his targets are people we already knew were awful and odious anyway, like Harvey mm-hmm. Weinstein. He goes after Harvey Weinstein. Well, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. <laughs> In other news, yeah. I mean, yeah. um, and actually that's the one complaint I would have about this book for for normal people. <laughs> mm-hmm. For me, it's great because I just, I kind of bathe in these Hollywood memoirs, especially for creatives. I don't care about like actors, but I love directors and writers who write these kind of things. Um, is that he doesn't exactly say anything that we didn't already know. We know mm-hmm. Hollywood's uh, just a god awful, <laughs> as we discussed mm-hmm. at the top of the show um but physically morally yes exactly but i mean um you know he's really as a creative though he's kind of kind of brilliant he's kind of Mm -hmm. a genius i mean if you look at his credits and what he's done and he's one of he's one of those writer directors so he's not some guy who just like is like a music video director who just started putting pictures together i mean he's actually a very smart he's a storyteller i mean he really is and this book is nothing if not great storytelling he is he is a great Really wonderful writer, Um, as this passage might indicate. um, The day I arrived, this is Edward Zwick talking, not me, (laughs) but it could be me, actually. (laughs) The day I arrived in Los Angeles, it was 102. 
as I drove around looking for a place to stay, falling ash from a brush fire in a canyon whose Spanish name I couldn't pronounce covered the used Volkswagen Rabbit I'd bought from an out-of-work sound editor. Half of its dashboard had been gnawed away by a German Shepherd left in the car with the windows rolled up, the air conditioning didn't work, and sweat pooled on the polyester seats. Not long ago, I'd been drinking in, uh, uh, in Paris. Now I was lost in a featureless city, not knowing a soul. I checked into a shabby motel on Pico with an overchlorinated leaf-strewn leaf pool <laughs> and spent the week... Before classes, he's about to go to UCLA, I believe. Before classes uh, began in my darkened room watching reruns of 1960s TV shows with a wet towel on my chest or seeking the cool refuge of a matinee in the Village Theater, which I think is pretty cool. At night, I haunted the Westwood bookstore or trolled the UCLA campus unsuccessfully hitting on coeds. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Hollywood. Welcome to Hollywood. Yeah, um, and that's just a sampling. It's a great read if you have even just a smattering of interest in the business or what it's like to be a, a, a successful mm-hmm. writer director. And that's what's really interesting too. The guy is wildly successful. He's mm-hmm. he's directed some hits, and I believe he was nominated and won an Oscar. I think for Glory. I think Glory was his directorial Oscar. I'm not Gwyneth sure. Gwyneth Paltrow that. won for Shakespeare in Love. And Shakespeare. I in, oh, and I bet he got the Shakespeare in Love nod then more than yeah, likely. Yeah, definitely yeah, a nod. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, um, so he's he has you know a, truly achieved the filmmaking Hollywood American dream. So he can afford air conditioning instead of a wet things are good now. <laughs> the Volkswagen Rabbit has a new dashboard, <laughs> um, <laughs> and they crack the windows for the German Shepherd. But no, he. Um, but even with all that success, it's amazing when you hear all of the unrealized projects, all the mm. really wonderful, brilliant sounding movies that we'll never see because Hollywood is too lame mm-hmm. to ever to allow that kind of quality. He did a film with Tom Cruise called The Last Samurai, 19, oh, I'm going to say yeah. 2002. Yeah. And the movie was just critically lambasted. They thought it was dumb that, uh, you know, and of course they, they were just beginning to ha- make the charges of like whitewashing, that sort yeah. of thing. And um, it's actually a really good movie. Um, yeah. It's very well done. And But that movie kind of ruined him for a while. Yeah. Like for a couple of years, oh. he couldn't get work. Mm, yeah. Like this is the director of Glory. This is the man who created 30-something, which was mm. actually a very groundbreaking TV show at the time. So... It just shows to go, yeah. It's a tough business. <laughs> it's a nasty, mm-hmm. nasty business. And that's, again, we already know that, but um, it's still a really entertaining read. So it's Would it be yeah. good for people who went into the film? Yes, it is, because he's it such is. a good writer. Okay. He's so, so entertaining. It's funny Very, stories. It's funny, yeah. and he just he knows how to grab a reader. He really, uh, his sentence structure and just the way the thing flows, yeah, you kind of can't stop. I read it in two mm-hmm. days. That's one of the few books I can say I read in two days this year. So cool. nothing wrong with that. But uh, hits, flops, and other illusions, Ed Zwick, here at your local CD. Public Library in the New Arrivals Biography section. We are going to move on to who wants it? I'm throwing the ball in the air. Come on, someone take the ball and, th- and shoot. I, c- I can go next. It's because Gemma. Because <laughs> there is a segue from your book, Very good. just what you just last said, um, with the kind of cultural appropriation. My book is um, Yellow Face mm-hmm. by R.F. Kuang. I hope I pronounced that rightly um she's rebecca kwang she's like extremely like well-educated young lady um that's a little (laughs) bit too impressive (laughs) i hate Um, i hate her already (laughs) (laughs) um but you don't that's the thing you're just like my goodness you are talented so the word that came to mind when i read this was um like if i was to sum up the whole book it would be free fall Mm. It's just like this free fall of um, catastrophic disaster after disaster done in a very witty, sarcastic, tour de force kind of way. She's amazing. The book is like easy to read, page turner, yeah. fast um, paced um, and obsessive. Um, someone on the back, who was it? I th- oh, it's someone, um, it's one of the stars of Crazy Rich Asians, Constance mm. Wu. Yep. She said, and I thought this was even better than my free fall analogy, that's why I went first and she goes second, <laughs> is reading Yellow Face felt like being inside a wild, brutal, psychological knife fight with a deranged <laughs> clown. Wow. <laughs> And I, you know, it's pretty much almost there. And the reason why it's such a kind of witty, sarcastic disaster is because it's, um, it's like the, it's, it's this, it, from, from what I was saying about a free fall, it's like a free fall into social media nightmare. Um, and that's, 
that's the kind of context of it. But let me let me read the blurb about what it's about sure. because I feel like the book jacket blurb actually did a much better <laughs> job of um, describing it than I would do. So it starts off with white lies, dark humor, deadly consequences, which is exactly what it's about. So it's about two authors. So best-selling sensation Juniper Song is not who she says she is. She didn't write the book she claims she wrote, and she is most certainly not Asian American. In this chilling and hilariously cutting novel from the number one New York best-selling author R.F. Kuang, Authors June Hayward and Athena Liu were supposed to be twin rising stars, but Athena's a literary darling. June Hayward is literally nobody. I think I said that wrong. Literally nobody. (laughs) Who wants stories about basic white girls, June thinks. So when June witnesses Athena's death in a freak accident, she acts on impulse. She steals Athena's just-to-finished masterpiece, an experimental novel about the unsung contributions of Chinese labourers during World War I. So what if June edits Athena's novel and sends it to her agent as her own work? So what if she lets her new publisher rebrand her as Juniper Song, complete with an ambiguously ethnic author photo? Doesn't this piece of history deserve to be told, whoever the teller? That's what June claims, and the New York Times bestseller list seems to agree. But June can't get away from Athena's shadow, and emerging evidence threatens to bring June's stolen success down around her. As June races to protect her secret, she discovers exactly how far she will go to keep what she thinks she deserves. Ooh. Yeah, it is. It is, and uh, giving away the fact that Athena dies at the beginning. It, uh, d- d- Athena dies. That her sort of like twin author, who's the successful one, and she's the kind of like plain boring one, um, <laughs> is not a, that much of a spoiler or giveaway alert mm-hmm. because it happens right at the beginning from this kind of like overeating pancake, <laughs> drunk pancake kind of contest that they're doing. Um, I, what you don't really expect is, you know, you kind of know that she's going to steal the manuscript, mm. but you don't think she's really going to do it and then she does. <laughs> and the fallout from that is amazing because she does get, a huge amount of success and then the publishing world the kind of like the corruption in it and I mm. used to work in publishing back way back when it was, it's actually one of my first jobs I worked in a very big publishing house in London and so I know some of that world and how it's kind of manipulated for readers and certain mm. authors and certain awards and certain lists however what wasn't party when I was in that world was the social media aspect yeah, and how absolutely. fast things yeah. free mm-hmm. fall. Absolutely. Have you guys seen American Fiction, the movie? Uh, I have with, not, uh, but I Jeffrey do want Wright. to say it now. It I certainly sounds seen like that. a companion piece to that in some yes, ways because ex- it really, uh, that, that's sort of the African American experience of, again, someone not writing black enough, quote unquote. Yes, and yeah. so it sounds, yeah, it's great. I mean, it's really, I like the fact that these conversations are happening right now about our fiction and what we read and what's represented and how it's yeah. represented and how much we believe and and, and the effect yeah. on the author who has yeah. to be someone else and maybe lie to yeah. be successful. I mean, it's, it's great. It's a really, uh, you know, um, it was, that was based, American Fiction is based on a book by Percival Everett called yes. Erasure, which um, he just has a new book. Uh, he does the Huck Finn uh, James. The, oh, the James one, yeah. which I want to read. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, good stuff. And also with this with this talking about race is that I didn't, I'm not going to talk about that because the whole, you know, you it's part of the book, but I feel like I can't comment because right, right. I'm not Asian American yeah, or yeah. Asian. And that was the point because yeah. she couldn't, you know, this false Mm-hmm. Um, June song she couldn't comment either you know and you 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 can't really create a book if you know yeah. I mean she does all the research and she kind of passes sure. it off as her own but the whole point is like please be mindful be aware be self-aware yeah, don't pretend absolutely. to know listen learn mm-hmm. from all that okay. um, so I can't comment on that thing but the other side of this book is um, there's a little bit of a kind of ghostly element because she's sort of haunted by the dead author's ghost and whether yeah. that's a real person or someone kind of like stalking her sure. or even whether it's guilt. you know a family member yeah. or a, mm-hmm. someone from that community that yeah. she's just not sure about it kind of haunts but yeah it's like this kind of huh. manifestation of yeah. the guilt that she's feeling um it's does lots of twists and turns more disasters more corruption more <laughs> satire more manipulation 
all this kind of fake friendships and appearance, yeah. you know, unreliable, totally unreliable relator that you hate. She's horrible. <laughs> she's, I think I have an anxiety attack. She's horrible, this book. but she's, you've got enough sympathy for her that you keep. You Mm -hmm. keep reading. You kind of want to protect her. You kind of don't want her to go down in flames. Yes. Find out if she does. The the book uh, has Mm -hmm. had a good run. I mean, it's very popular. So, I mean, that's that's great. Um, I haven't gotten my hands on it yet. I want to. It's here. Yeah. You've convinced me. (laughs) It's right on uh, um, Lucky Day. There we go. The moment. Who's going to be lucky? (laughs) 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 This show, hopefully. But it's it's brilliant. I mean, she's brilliant. Looking forward to seeing what what she next does. Yeah, without a doubt. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, thank you, Gemma. Fantastic. You're welcome. All right. Uh, let's uh, let's ke- head on over to the YS desk <laughs> and we'll talk to Casey. Casey, what have you brought for us and our patrons today? This is a book called The Wondrous Wonders by Camille Jordy, J-O-U-R-D-Y. Mm-hmm. And there's no relation to any of the other books. <laughs> I can't really draw any parallels. <laughs> Probably a good thing. It is a young adult book, but I think kids younger and adults would love it as well. It's a beautifully illustrated graphic novel that some of the reviewers said remind them of Miyazaki. So Mm. sort of like a washed. There's there's a trigger word. (laughs) I'll be there shortly. (laughs) Yes, I want to purchase a copy to own forever because this is a charming, delightful, witty book Mm. and it is about a young girl named joe she's pictured on the cover and she's rv camping with her family and there's a new stepdad in the family and page two she starts wandering off into the woods she's like i don't want to be on this camping trip so she goes exploring into the woods and stumbles upon a fantastical world what a miyazaki setup right there exactly (laughs) yes oh she's wearing her little like hoodie and a little backpack and sneakers like I'm running away and she (laughs) runs encounters these tiny little humans with a crown and a dress riding these tiny little multicolored ponies (laughs) and then she continues to meet more fantastical beasts and eventually helps them sneak into a castle they all bake themselves into a little cake and sneak into a castle to um, overthrow a tyrant um, who has taken control of their little world and the banter between the characters is hilarious. Um, they announce the people going into the ballroom and they call one of the ladies like Miss Lucy Kabusi, now entering the ballroom. Um, beautiful dialogue and illustrations. So the illustrator is the author. Um, so charming and lovely. It is a wondrous wonder. It is a wondrous wonder. And I am surprised it hasn't gotten more accolades or buzz. Mm-hmm. Um, this book came to me through Junior Library Guild, which is a subscription box that um, librarians can sign up for. Right. So the Junior Library Guild curates a box and I can review the titles before they send it to me, mm-hmm. make sure I don't already have a copy. And it really helps broaden my horizons because it's, you know, we try so hard to read mm-hmm. reviews, mm-hmm. judge a book by the cover, accolades how many people do we think our community would appreciate the book so getting a subscription box is really helpful because it just yeah. opens your eyes to new things that might not be getting a lot of attention mm-hmm. otherwise yeah. J- JLG does an amazing job with graphic novels too they always mm-hmm. seem to really mm-hmm. be on top of that genre yes. I remember when I would be opening the boxes you know when uh, in the past and just my jaw would drop I'm like look at this graphic novels I had no idea about. I was totally Mm -hmm. in the dark. So that's great. Yeah, fantastic. Very cool. I hope more comes from this author. She has another book that is a little bit more realistic fiction Mm -hmm. about uh, inner turmoil of a girl going through something. So I really hope she makes more books. They're beautiful. Nice. It's. I mean, the color palette itself is just stunning. And it's It's not too overdone. There's a bunch of different characters, but there's not this over... Um, emphasis on world building like mm-hmm. not talking about the different animals like they're just there yeah. mm-hmm. they're not trying to explain oh these are the cat creatures right. mm-hmm. or this stuff because I find fantasy can get just a little too bogged down oh, with that sometimes yeah can. yep 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 uh, that's fantastic um, well we'll look forward to it here it sounds like it's on its way soon to our library we don't have one yet. we do have a copy oh, oh yes. I, I thought you were this is uh, one of us oh wonderful perfect all right it's here yeah. it's available um and yeah, have you guys seen uh, The Boy and the Heron yet? The most recent uh, Miyazaki film? 
No, but, but once chance, it comes to streaming, we'll yeah. we'll have it on our library. It is. Uh, I saw. I had a chance to see it theatrically, and um, not my favorite Miyazaki movie, but it's absolutely delightful and wonderful. And uh, yeah, so is it wondrous? Uh, wondrous. just a bit, just a bit. Yes, <laughs> a bit you get get those weird weird chills. So <laughs> so that's good. All right, folks. Um, Barring any other bits of business, I think that is uh, New Book Tuesday for uh, this particular Tuesday. And if you have any uh, questions about the books or anything you'd like us to talk about or just want to say hi, please do reach out to us. We are at the Cedarburg Public Library and um, you can leave some comments on the uh, YouTube side of things. These episodes all get posted to the CPL Radio YouTube stream and uh, we'll get back to you, as they say. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next Tuesday, Lord willing. (laughs) 